I think we all can agree that Bruce Primer is the best DIY alternative for Flipper Zero. And this is a summary of information from my past videos for its various modules, step-by-step -step installation guide, and demonstration of key features all in one handy compilation. Okay, now the first are the controllers, and I, I would recommend the M5 Stack Stick C Plus two for twenty dollars. An alternative for ten dollars more would be the M5 Stack Card Pewter, which is the Unit GPS version one point one for just ten dollars. CC eleven hundred one. Make sure you get the 433 megahertz, be the 125 kilohertz, and the module for that is the RDM6300, which is this one. The next one is the 13.56 megahertz. That would be my recommended is the M5 stack RFID2 for five dollars. For Bluetooth, you need an NRF. 84 modules for around four dollars and you want to emulate the hack pipe rubber ducky you would need to get the nrf or the ch9329 and lastly if you want to emulate fm radio that would be the si4712 module for eight dollars the first thing we need to do is go to Bruce that computer slash flasher and there you will see two options latest release and the one that is more experimental the better release and you will have the choices of the products that you have and this is where we'll, we will choose our devices later. Put the M5 Stick Plus 2 into firmware mode or firmware flash mode as that you can see here there you will be needing a jumper cable you put it on ground and you need to short it so put it on G0 connect it USB cable okay so once we connect it USB cable you can remove the jumper wire you go to latest release M5 only oh, uh, yeah, M5 stack stick plus 2 and as you can see here, there is this USB single serial, click, connect, and this will be connecting. And click install stick C plus 2. All you have to do is wait. Okay, now the next one that we will be trying to install the firmware is the card pewter. Okay, so what we will be doing is, as you can see here, if it will focus... There is that button G0, and that is the one that you will be holding while you insert the USB cable. And that will put it on the firmware flash mode. Again, same instructions. Let's go M5 stack card computer. Click connect. Choose the JTAG serial debug unit. Then connect. And now we wait. Click install card computer. Install. But not least, we will be doing the Lilgo T embed. And the way for the T embed to go to the firmware flash mode is that you need to hold that button when you are plugging it in. Okay, so when you hold that button, after you plug in, you can release it. Go to Liligo and go to T embed and click connect. The same USB JTAG serial debug you need and click connect and click install. Quick disclaimer the techniques shown in this video are for educational purposes only. Performing these actions in public or without authorization is illegal. This is a simplified demonstration. For in depth details about this, please refer to the article link in the description. Use this knowledge responsibly and ethically. Okay, so what I am doing is I will be attaching a RFID reader for it. And let's go to RFID. I okay. 
So let's go to read tag. And what we'll be gonna do is we will be putting Kirby here. And as you can see, if it will focus, it is starting to read Kirby. There. So what you're gonna do is after it had read successfully, you can click here or here and you can clone it or you can save that tag on the file. Now the first thing that you need to do if you are doing any evil portal stuff is to have a good list of HTML, login HTMLs that you can use. And this is the GitHub that I've found, Google Projects Evil Portal HTML Files. Let's put that aside and let's go to Wi-Fi, click enter, okay, Evil Portal, click enter, and let's just choose the default for now. And let's do the custom HTML later. So custom Wi-Fi, that is where you can rename your SSID. This is the IP address that you can access or change the SSID name uh, or access the passwords or credentials that you have captured. So I'll just click enter and now it is starting. Let's just wait and as you can see, that's captured zero. So what we're gonna do, we'll try to connect to it. Try to connect to it, click Wi-Fi. Let's wait for the free Wi-Fi to appear. We click it. Okay, and as you can see here is the sign-in page. That looks like a Google, so that's default. So let's just put um Hakista and click next. Okay, and when I click next, as you can see here. There is one password captured and the credentials is there. Wi-Fi attacks and there are several things that you can do. So the first one would be targeted attacks. What it will do is it will scan for available access point and you can choose one and you can do several things to it. Okay, so let's click. Right now it's scanning and like any other demos that I do, I will be just doing it on my personal Wi-Fi connection. So I'll be choosing that. First is information. I'm not going to show that. But the second one is the auth. Okay, so here as you can see, I am connected to my Wi-Fi and I'm just going to click the auth. And as you can see, as soon as I click that, it has disconnected from that Wi-Fi access point. Now, the next one I'll be showing is clone portal. Okay, so what it will do is, so let's click it. And if I'm using the card footer, there's an SD card. You can choose some of the evil portals for it. But for this one, since I don't have an SD card attached to it, let's just click default. And what it will do, the same demo that I have with the evil portal is that it will copy the name of the SSID that I've choose, the one that we targeted, and it will show it here, a copy of it. And as you can see, you can now have you now have those two Wi-Fi access point. And we can just click here and it was asking you to sign in. And now this is the evil portal that we have. So if I put a credential here at test.com and this is subscribe, please subscribe to the channel and I click next. Okay, so that's the evil portal and here you can see there the captured credential. Ether attack is combining those two, a DO and a clone portal. Okay, let me click. Next, next, starting. And let's see. So as you can see, it has deauthored it and it is having problems connecting to it. And because it is having a problem connecting to it, 
if I don't have that other Wi-Fi there, it will be connecting to the evil portal that has been created here, like this. Okay, so, and then you, it will think you need to sign in, and it's the same evil portal attack again. Attack called beacon attack. Now, beacon attack has several things. It can show you different types of AP. And as you can see, it has funny SSID. I think I, I have demonstrated the recall role, random SSID and custom SSID. So for this demonstration, let's use the funny SSID and see what we see on the list of Wi-Fi. So now it is spanning, spamming access point that we'll be seeing here in a while. Okay, so as you can see, Dora the Explorer, drive by Wi-Fi, drive it like it's hotspot. And I have the card filter with the R4433R attached, RF. And make sure under config that you have the correct module configured. Let's go back, click our apps, can copy. And what we can do so that you can capture everything, click down and you can go filter, click enter so that it will filter everything. Okay, so just go back and let's send a signal. So you can see there's one that is captured. You can click down again and you can save the signal or as raw. Okay, so you can click save signal and it is save. Now, we will try to replay it, the save transmitter. Okay, that is the RF433 transmitter. So let's go back and go to main menu again, click RF and under custom sub. Under SD card, there you will see the latest one that you have captured. And let's just click it. And as you can see, it had been sent successfully. Now the, now the next feature that I'll be showing you is the spectrum. Now, here you can see there is a certain waterfall that is happening. This one also has that. And if we go to spectrum, and I have the wrong module. Let's plug in the receiver module. And let's click. As you can see, it can see the signals that are being sent. And let's go to RF again. And another representation would be the square wave spectrum. And let's see. Okay, as you can see there. There are the square spectrum that are being sent. Okay, so the next one that I'll be showing you is the signal chamber. Okay, so let's go here. And okay, so it is working. And let's go to J signal jammer full and check how this one will change. Okay, so that is how it will look like if it's jamming. And if it is somewhere near, Okay, so as you can see, this one, it is not working. Okay. And, oh no, IR, sorry. Let's go to IR. And there is custom IR. And IRV, okay. Let's go to IRV. And there is this LED here. That is where you're going to send the signal. Okay, once you have done that, as you can see here, it has captured something. And all you have to do is click enter or forward. Now it will say what button it is. So let's just delete. Let's just say that would be on off. Okay. And you'll need to save it to a certain device. Okay, so we just say my device, which is this light, and let's click enter, okay, and save it on the SD card. Okay, so there are two ways to go about it. So let's go to IR. 
and let's go custom IR SD card and most of the Bruce um, when you save something here it will be under a folder prefix with a Bruce so Bruce IR Bruce IR my device and let's click spam all okay so as you can see it has successfully turned on the lights that we have okay so let's start i have here a breadboard and here is the sd card module okay as you can see here those are the pins cs sck clock bossy miso bcc and the uh, ground now it is important to know that some of the sd card module would have a b 3.3 meaning that you will be putting it on here rather than the five volts okay so the first thing we do is we'll just plug it here and if you know basic breadboard this means that this row will have will share the same electricity or yeah same input so what we're gonna do is Based on the diagram, first is that the ground and CS should, or the CS should be grounded. So let's put it here. And let's put the CS. Let's ground CS like this. Okay, and let's just put, so what we'll be doing is this is one two three four okay so let's put it one by one so that we will know okay so now you have one two three four which is the bcc miso mosi and the clock okay now here what we'll be doing is we'll be putting it here this will be ground okay so the first one would be vcc and since this is a 5 volt device or module let's put it on 5 volts okay so oops sorry the next one is vcc miso okay uh, is it yeah it's miso so miso would be on now i forgot miso would be on this one so the second pin would be here the third pin would be on g26 one two three okay g26 and the last pin would be on g0 which is the clock and if you did everything correct like this i'll just plug it in or let's plug it in okay so let's see if it will boot okay so it does and let's go to files and if you did it correctly if you go to the sd card here you will see all of the sd card content so there you have it a quick rundown of the key aspect of the bruce firmware from my previous video let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or the features that you are most excited about always remember Keep on hacking my fellow Hakista.